window here. There we go. So I am here every single Wednesday, as best that I can. Life always happens um, sometimes at 2 p.m. live. And today we're going to talk about ways to ground your fearful dog emotionally. So um, many times we're like learning about training, which is wonderful. Obviously, I'm a dog trainer, so I'm a huge advocate of dog training. But today we're going to talk about some things that you can do that can kind of reach the emotional level that are outside of, oh, counter conditioning, fat training, um, desensitization, if any of you guys are familiar with those terms, or just basically rewarding the good behavior. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start off with just kind of talking a little bit about an example of the bigger picture on, on what I'm talking about today. So one time when I had Seiki, he started developing this huge amount of fear around other, other cars, actually. He was generally a pretty confident dog, but he had some, some fear things that came up. But for the most part, when he was around like cars on our leash walk, like we'd be walking down the street and cars would pass, right? I mean, that's the normal thing that happens in the human world. <laughs> And Seiki was always like, la, 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 everything's fine. Well, one December, he started developing like an intense phobia with cars, like really like panic attacks, not wanting to walk, freezing, um, shaking, all of this stuff. Now, I did end up working with some training with it, but I did some energetic things. Um, and one of the biggest energetic things that, that I did was I added in white light and a lot of breathing through my belly. So energetically, I was shifting the energy within myself and then helping my dog shift. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. But even more so, some of the different energy things that you can do that are even outside of yourself that can shift your dog. And some of them may actually help um, shift you as well. And you can use these do these in addition to training that you're doing to help a dog that, that is feeling um, fear or even just stress in general. Um, you can also just use these alone and see if they just shift the so-called problem that you're having um, and expand it to a whole new possibility. So those of you that know me, I think pretty well, know that I really, um, try to look at things from the perspective of possibility rather than, than problem. Um, problem has a very constricted energy behind it. And I'm not trying to say that there's something wrong with you if you think of problems. That is absolutely not what I'm saying. Um, every single person in this universe, I think, has been programmed about problems. What I'm saying is if our dog is in a state and we're perceiving it as a problem and we're not open to having a different perspective around it, we constrict and we actually feed into the fear or the anxiety that our dog is already feeling. So we're gonna be opening up the possibility, like what can we create now? What possibility can, create, can we create now with our dog? What are some other things that we can do that can help open the energetic flow? How can we be a team? How can we work together? Opening up to questions that are opening us up to some other realms of creation with our, with our pets. So I am seeing that there are two people on today. Yay, that's so exciting. So I don't know who you are. Um, Facebook likes to um, keep that anonymous unless you want me to know who you are. I would love to know who you are, if you are willing to let me know who you are. And if you are, then you and I can actually have a conversation today and I can actually help you in more of an in-depth level. So if you're willing um, to share with me, um, maybe tell me like what, um, what breed of dog you have and the age of your dog. And then tell me like, um, what are you wanting to accomplish today? What are some questions that you might have um, about um, 
interfere with your dog. Oh, I already lost somebody. Somebody that wanted to stay in hiding was like, oh no, Joanne wants to know who I am. Oh, I better get out of here. That's going to happen. I'm definitely an open person. So if that does not resonate with you, you might want to run away. Um, okay, I'm just making a joke here. All right, they might have left for a completely different reason. Who knows, right? Okay, so let me go back to screen sharing. All right, so before we dive into today's topic, and while you're um, answering my question, if you want to, I want to encourage you to, again, comment below so I can help you share this video with others because we want to expand this out, expand it out in the universe, let other people see it, feel it, get the help that they need. Watch the replay. Even if you get the material, watch it because um, it's going to help you get it into your long-term memory if you re-watch it and uh, you know share the replay with others. I also do want to let you know that I will be doing a live in-person event at Chagrin Yoga um, from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Ohio. Um, it's all about the energy behind dog training. It's an in-person workshop. If you would like to attend this event, um, you do need to register. You can go to this link right here. And it's also pinned in the comments below um, at the top. If you like the stuff that you're learning um, with me today, looks like I screen shared my whole entire computer. Let me try that again. If you like what um, you're learning today or even you know things that um, you see in the upcoming future on the Facebook Lives, then this would definitely be something you want to pop in on to. Because um, between now and until the end of April, I'm going to be really um, focusing a lot on the energetic side of, of dog training. All right, so let's see if we got a comment before I move forward. Okay, that's okay. So when you feel comfortable, um, definitely comment. You know, last time I did this, there was a delay when people were writing. Um, I don't know if that was a Wi-Fi thing um, or um, if it's uh, something that's going on with Facebook and Zoom being connected or what. Um, but I am definitely excited to hear from you. So when you have a fearful dog, I would love to know and write in the comments below, what remedies have you tried to use? Have you tried any remedies to help your dog on an energetic realm be less fearful? And if you have, I would love for you to comment and let me know what you've tried. And if I know what you've tried, then I can kind of look at it and we can even base our conversation off of some of those things that um, are working for you or maybe even things that aren't working for you and get you some better options. Um, so yeah, I think there is a delay. So I just got a comment. Kit, Kit says she's got um, Bernie, who's five years old, a staffy bully mix, very sweet and gentle in the house, very anxious and aggressive towards strangers, new people coming into the house. Oh, okay, great. That's not a fun thing to deal with. I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. Um, remember, everything in life has its gift. So if we can, um, you know, really look at it from that possibility and gift perspective rather than that problem, then you're going to be able to open yourself up in a way that's going to create more teamwork between the two of you. So some of these remedies that we're talking about today may very well help um, in that situation with you and your dog kit. Um, so first of all, a lot of times what we do is we put our dog in the stressor and then we just try to, you know, train them right away. It can be really nice to start with um, decompression and even use some decompression compression, um, techniques during the training as well. One that I really like and I use a lot with my clients is T-Touch. Are you familiar with T-Touch Kit or anyone else that's watching this call? Please let me know if you've used T-Touch before or if you've heard about it. Um, it's basically developed by Linda Tellington Jones. She's used it on so many different animal species. <laughs> it's crazy. They even use it on reptiles. It's amazing. They've used it 
with um, medical problems. There's so many different ones out there. And they have also used it for behavioral things that are going on as well, or, you know, animals that are certain stressed out. Okay, so you haven't heard of tea touch. Great. So this is going to be a really eye opening um, experience for you if you're willing to try it on. So I'm going to tell you, like, when I had dogs that would come into my group dog training classes, most of them are pretty well rounded, but every now and then I would run into a dog that was just really anxious being around so many dogs or people or just being in a new environment. And I would tell the owner, I would say, don't even worry about doing training today. Just listen to what I'm saying and practice it at home. And this is what I want you to do with your dog. So they would just be on the ground and doing this. So obviously you're not gonna be holding your dog like this. I'm just being silly. Hi, hi guys. Um, so yeah, don't do this, you know, even if you have a small dog, if they're anxious, that's probably going to increase the anxiety, right? <laughs> so you want to um, ground your thumb and your four fingers together. And then you're basically doing like a full circle and three fourths around. Now this is just one type of T-touch. So there are so many types out there and you can actually become a certified T-Touch practitioner. I am not because I've, I just, I've thought about it, but I've found this one touch to be a super effective. That That's all I've ever used. And you can see like when I'm doing this, are you seeing me move? with the dog's hair, the way the dog's hair grows or against it? Comment below and let me know what you see. And also when you're thinking of pressure when you're using it, go ahead and take off your glasses if you have glasses on. And then I want you to just put your hands on your eyelid or your fingers. And I want you to use like the lightest pressure that you can use. And now use like the most pressure that you can use without obviously hurting yourself, okay? So the most pressure is a pressure three, the least pressure is a pressure one, and in between that would be like a pressure two. I find most dogs are great with a pressure one, and I find that most people wanna do a pressure three. So most people, when I show them this, um, this is what they do. And I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not too much. So you can see the skin is really, really moving and the pressure is super deep. So when you're doing this properly, generally like this, you can barely see the skin move and you're doing it slow. And the nice thing I really like about T-Touch too is it, it's gonna reflect how you feel too. So if you're more stressed, you're gonna have a really hard time doing it slow. If you're stressed, you're feeding that stress into your dog because your dogs are a magnet of that energy. So you really want to notice, am I doing this? Oh, gee, okay. Can I be more present in the moment and do a lighter pressure of T-touch? Really nice and light. And if you have your dog there right now and your dog is by you on the call, do it right now, seriously. Notice how your dog starts relaxing as you as you do it. Now you're not following your dog around. So if your dog's like walking away from you when you're doing it, don't follow him. If you go in for a massage and you get off the table and leave the room, the massage therapist doesn't come running back at you going, come back here, let me massage you while you're walking out the room. That's stressful, right? We're looking at, okay, put yourself in your dog's shoes, right? What's gonna help your dog decompress? They're pretty much the same thing as in the human realm, to be honest. You can use T-Touch on people. I've used it on my daughter all the time. So in the middle of the stressor, a lot of times it's not going to make a huge difference if your dog's way above threshold. And if you don't understand what that means, then you definitely want to follow me more because I've had, I actually have a recent video on one of my Facebook lives on my dog is too stressed to learn. What do I do? Um, and that Facebook Live is really about how to make sure that your dog is not getting subjected to such a high amount of stress when you're training them. You want them to be in a low amount of stress when you're doing T-Touch or also or even um, almost no stress. So um, 
what I mean by that is like for you, Kit, you could actually do T-Touch before you have somebody come to your house. So the person isn't there yet, hasn't entered in the house, and then you're doing T-Touch, right? So think of it like this. You have a very stressful meeting that you're gonna do with your boss. You meditate first. You come into it with a whole different energy than you would if you just rushed into that meeting. So doing that T-Touch before the person comes, doing it even after they leave as well. And you could also do it while they're there if your dog isn't at a super high degree, okay? If they are at a super high degree, it's probably not gonna make um, a huge difference. And if you're having trouble, again, with that super high degree, then you wanna check out that other Facebook Live um, or message me and we can work together. So, um, I would like to ask you guys, what situations would you want to do tea touch in with your dog? What's coming up for you? And I would, I would love to know. And Kit, especially for you, like, was that um, something that you're willing to try? Yes or no? And then the other thing that can be really helpful to do is, um, to, I thought I had these windows open. Let me see here. There they are. Okay. I have a lot of windows open today because I'm a super creative person. And I was like, I want to do this, this, and this. And I was doing stuff earlier today. So it's not all, you know, perfectly um, organized. Okay. So what I wanted to jump to is this. Okay, so I calm pet. It used to be through the dog's ear. It actually has relaxing classical music. And it can be really helpful to um, decrease your dog's heart rate. Um, and again, look what it says. I call music for people too. Wow, guys. Okay, please see this because your dog is your mirror. Um, and if you don't know that, start accepting that. Um, and notice that when you start decompressing yourself, it helps your dog and vice versa. So if you do stuff together, you're going to create a huge headway that's gonna make either training not even necessary or excel your training process a lot faster, okay? Um, so I'm going to actually play an excerpt for you because this used to be called Through the Dog's Ear, and a lot of them are by Joshua Leeds. And again, it's scientifically proven to um, decrease the dog's heart rate. So I'm going to pull it up on my iTunes, um, Joshua Leeds, and I'm going to play it for you guys so you can hear. You know what? I want to stop it and make sure I hit the sound. I did hit the sound. I want to make sure I hit that so you can make sure that you can hear it. And then as you're listening to this, please comment and tell me, yes, this is relaxing or no, it's not for you, okay? If you're finding it relaxing, add in some breathing while you're listening to it through your belly.
Oh, that was relaxing to me. Was it for you? Let's see what you guys said. Okay. Yeah, Kit, was it relaxing for you? Let me know. Okay, so you're telling me that yes, you would need help with those higher levels of stress. So definitely check out that um, Facebook Live on help my dog is too stressed to learn. What do I do? Or I think that's what it was called. It was something like that. If you can't find it, let me know. I'll also try to just reply and give that. Facebook Live for you. Um, but yeah, definitely message me because we can discuss options for sure together and I can absolutely help you. I'd love to. So um, again, like if you play this in the middle of the stressor, so think about it like this. If you have a full-blown panic attack and you start to meditate, are you going to become fully relaxed? Well, yeah, it is possible. But generally, it's just going to take the panic down the sub. And it might not even be that noticeable to the outside observer. It'd probably be more noticeable for you internally. So again, when you do stuff before the stressor or during the stressor when the dog's only minorly stressed, not majorly, then you can actually physically see the changes in your dog's body language. And I would recommend that you play this relaxing music while you're doing the, the T-touch. So it's going to decrease your dog's heart rate. It's also going to decrease yours. And iCalm Pet, I believe, has free downloads. And you can also YouTube it. Um, I mean, if you want to buy it, do it. Let yourself have the gift of what you want. Um, but there are ways to get that music for free. And basically, it's classical music. Now, if you just turn on a regular radio station, there's going to be um, ads in there. So whatever you're using you want to make sure it's ad free just straight relaxing classical music not upbeat and fast okay all right um okay i think i'm back now all right so I completely forgot about um, Facebook's policy on playing music. So um, anyway, what I played was Joshua Leeds through the dog's ear music for canines, okay? And that's gonna help, you know, release your dog's stress and decrease your dog's heart rate. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you play it while, you know, you're doing the T-touch or while um, you're doing other things that are going to help your dog relax. And definitely doing it before the stressful situation is going to, you know, have the greatest effect. And if you're doing it during the stressor, make sure that your dog isn't at the greatest amount of stress. It's just your dog is just minorly stressed. And that's going to help decrease your your dog's um, heart rate. Got so in the moment, I totally like forgot about all that copywriting. Um, so again, you can go to the Icon Pet, okay, and get music there. It's just relaxing classical music pretty much. And upbeat classical music is not going to do the same thing. Um, and if you play your own classical music, you want to make sure that it's just really relaxing. It's not, um, again, upbeat. And it also doesn't have any commercials in it. So like if you're playing it off the radio, it's going to have um, those commercials um, in it too. Okay. All right, so that's going to be something that I would add to your toolbox for sure. And I'm also wondering if any of you guys have heard of Adaptal. So Adaptal is a really um, calming product for some dogs. It actually gives off 
uh, pheromones. It doesn't give off the same pheromones that the mother would give to the young. So basically the mother give off pheromones to young and it, it just calms the puppies down and they learn how to replicate it, <laughs> which is kind of cool. So it doesn't smell anything to us, but for um, dogs, it will, or they will smell it. And it can calm some of those dogs down. Okay, now it doesn't work on every dog, but it is something that you could try. Um, there's the plug-in, there's a spray, and there's a collar. So I would recommend, for the most part, for most of my clients, I've used either the plug-in or the spray. Um, I find the collar to be a little stressful because it can't get wet. So, um, and then once it's wet, it's pretty much ruined. And if you live in Ohio, like I do, then you're basically dealing with a lot of rain. <laughs> so um, if you use the, the spray, you can actually spray it on a bandana and then you just want it to dry because it is alcohol based. So you dry it let it air dry, um, I think it's about 10 minutes after you spray it, then you can tie the bandana around your dog's neck. So that can move with your dog and that's really what's nice about the adaptal. So it could go in the car with you, on your walks, wherever you go, it's there. The plug-in's only gonna work when your dog is in the room that the plug-in's plugged in and it only like covers a certain surface area. So you're gonna wanna make sure you read about that um, and make sure that you're, if you're using it in a really wide open space, it's only going to work close to the plugin. So you do want to be um, aware of that. So if I were like with Kit, if I were to have um, somebody coming over, I, an adaptal I know was working, I could plug in the adaptal in a room with the door closed, turn on some classical music, do some tea touch to just help decompress my dog's stress level before that visitor even comes. And then you can even add chewing. So a lot of like chewing um, or even sniffing too can help decompress stress as well. So you can um, get, I mean, whatever chew stuff that you have. So if you have bully sticks or um, I'm not a huge fan of rawhide, but if you like rawhide, um, greenies, kongs, uh, antlers, I love, love, love antlers, Himalayan dog chews, um, cow hooves, pig ears, things that your dog is actually going to chew on, it actually decreases the dog's stress level. So moving their jaw, and actually if you do that yourself and you do it kind of slowly, try it on. I look so silly. <laughs> it's going to decrease that stress level. So as you were doing that, did it start calming you down? I would love to know when you did that movement, if, if you felt a little bit calmer, I did. So um, doing that, having your dog chew on something while you're doing the tea trucks, while you're playing the classical music, like the more remedies you compile onto each other, the greater the shift's gonna be in that anxiety or, or fear or stress. And you can also think of what, well, oh, I wanna say if your dog's a resource guarder. So if your dog guards objects and that stresses them out, then definitely don't be up doing tea touch while you're while you're giving your dog um, that chewing item. Now sniffing can make a world of difference too. So I actually worked with this one dog that was like really barky when people would come up to the house, um, and he just wanted to like run out of the room and just bolt to the door and start barking. But then as soon as the person came in, he actually liked the people. But it was just like really intense energy. He's like, I just kind of like run in, bolting across the room. So what we actually did is we did a lot of energy work where we did some tea touch in the room. We played, I think we played classical music 
And I know we did a go find it game. So we took some food and we just hit it in different areas of the room. So we had a room that was closed and we hid the items. And that in itself just kind of helped the dog decompress a little bit because sniffing and finding things. So the nose itself um, will help decrease stress a lot. And even like I, if those of you that have maybe worked with a therapist, they'll say, you know, you stress out, find five things that you can see, five things that you can hear, five things that um, you can touch. And then they usually say one or two things that you can smell and taste because, you know, those are generally harder to find more things. But even just like breathing in lavender scent or some form of scent, it actually does um, light up certain parts of your brain that helps you relax. So that smelling um, can be helpful too. So, you know, you could be like, okay, let's, we're going to do a go find it game. I, while some classical music is playing, then we're going to sit down and we're going to do some, some tea touch in that moment while you're chewing on something that's relaxing for you. And then once I see that you've decompressed, then I'm going to take you out of the room and do some training with the visitor, like counter conditioning or systematic desensitization, probably with your dog on the leash if you're worried about your dog biting somebody. Um, and that's, you know, we're not going to be going into details on that today. Um, but that energetic end can make a world of difference to start with. And you can, you know, even like while the visitors there, keep playing the classical music, do some tea touch while they're there. So I had a client that their dog was very barky when, um, I don't remember if it was the UPS guy or the mailman. I think it was the mailman. And we trained her dog to go to her bed. So that's a training thing. But then the energetic thing we did was while the dog was on her bed, do some tea touch. So she actually did tea touch while the dog was on the bed. And the dog actually um, ran to the bed when the mailman was there and started to just relax and stop barking. So it can make a huge difference when you add in those energetic realms because it does kind of reach the um, emotional end of the body faster. Um, you're kicking in more endorphins, you're decreasing cortisol levels, and you're decreasing the firing of the amygdala. So a lot of dogs that are scared of fireworks, the amygdala is firing so much that it's really hard to even do training to shift that. And um, energetic realms can make a faster um, shift with that type of fear than, than just doing straight training. So how many of you have noticed that your dog is feeling less stressed when he's chewing on something or smelling anything. Let me know if you've noticed that change. I know like all of clients say, oh, I don't want my dog sniffing when I'm leash walking him. I always tell them that sniffing is a huge stress reliever. It's a really good idea for your dog to sniff at least sometimes during the walk. You're allowed to have boundaries. You want to be a team and let your dog be able to be a dog and get that stress out. So let's share. Um, some other things. So like Blackwing Farms is really awesome. They have a lot of um, trying to think of the word of it's just herbs and they're basically diluted down so it's like um, a homeopathic and it can really help decrease a lot of stress and you can even take them yourself as well so um let's see what so like here's like a calm spray that they have develop calm and focus become better listeners.
for dogs, horses, right? Um, of just, um, sorry, Eastern medicine, instead of just putting your dog on, you know, an antidepressant. Now, I'm okay if you do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Um, but some people are, you know, they feel a little bit more fear around giving their dogs medication. And if you're one of those people, then, you know, these can really, really help. Um, here, you know, this one has valerian root in it. It's going to help with impulse control, relaxation, et cetera. I do want to make sure that you understand I'm not a, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. Um, I cannot say this is what I would recommend for your dog. But you are willing to take this knowledge and, and you know, give it a shot. Now, if you use these things, um, you would go ahead and like put it on um, your dog's food or drop it in their mouth without touching the tongue or put it on some treats or put it on your hands and rub it in their ears, the inside of their ears or the bottom of their feet. And you actually are gonna wanna put it on like almost four times a day. It's not gonna work if you don't put it on pretty regularly. Now, unlike Western medicine, where you got a pretty regimen, like if they say twice a day, they usually tell you the times a day you need to give it to them. With this, you can be more lax. You can be like, when I get up in the morning, before I go to work, when I get home from work and before I go to bed, three to four times, I think is really what, what they recommend. Um, and they'll um, explain it on there for you. But if you're just giving it to your dog as needed, you might not notice a huge difference. So if you've already tried some of these, you might want to try just giving it to your dog on a regular basis and, and see um, if it makes more of a difference for you and your dog. I'm curious to know, have, have any of you guys tried like flower essences or homeopathy or Bach flowers at all? Let me know if you have. And a really common one is rescue remedy that's a bach flower that some people really know about um and it has a lot of different um herbs in there that really help realign the body and basically what it does is it helps realign your body so that eventually energetically it's more within alignment it doesn't need to take that uh remedy anymore you actually get to you know stop using it which is kind of cool how many of you guys have heard of a thunder shirt? Any of you guys heard of that? I really love the thunder shirts. I think they're fun and I like them and somewhere it doesn't make any difference at all. If you purchase it, they are, you know, um, worth it if it's going to help your dog. You can also, like, go to, um, oh, look, I like that picture because you can see how it wraps around the dog, and it's, it basically puts pressure on all their acupressure points, so you can see it was on the side, the underneath the top, and it wraps around the, the chest area. That's what you want. It, it's reaching those pressure points, those acupressure points, and causing the body to relax if it works for your dog. And you can literally get like a spandex type of top that can fit over your dog like this as well. And you could also just get a t shirt, a kid's t shirt, and tie it in a knot. Just try to not do it on your dog's spine because that would be you know, really uncomfortable, but something that, you know, you want it to be very tightly fit. So you can see my shirt here is pretty loose. You, you'd want it to be tight. And then you're going to know if it works, right? Um, and it can just be a really fun thing to give a shot and try and see if it makes a difference for your dog. And you can do it that way for hardly spending any money. My throat feels so dry and I'm almost out of water. Oh. I may choose to step away a little bit and a little bit and refill that. So have any of you guys tried 
a Thunder shirt. And if you have, has it made a difference for your dog, yes or no? I would love to know about that. Okay, so I think there's a lot of other things that some, you know, people have said can really, you know, make a difference. I, um, I personally um, really have found the biggest difference, I think, with the flower essences with people that have used those. That there, are, you know, you can actually buy Bach flowers like Mimulus um, and Rock Rose, Aspen. Those are really good for uh, relieving stress as well. I think some of those are actually in Rescue Remedy. It's actually going to Google it here and see what ingredients are in Rescue Remedy. Okay, Rock Rose, um, that's for courage, presence of mind, Clematis, focus when ungrounded and patience, patience with problems and people, Cherry Plum, balanced mind when losing control. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could always try any of those remedies on their own as well and see if they make a difference for you and your dog. And you know, you're always welcome to use medication. So if you wanna to talk to your vet about medication that's gonna help your dog, you know, feel less stressed as well and use Western, you know, medicine. Um, even these Eastern things, it's always a good idea to talk to your vet first, make sure they're not going to interact with anything that your dog is taking, make sure everything's going to be fine. They are pretty unlikely to interact, um, but it can be helpful to have that conversation. And if you're going to have that conversation with your vet, you could talk about melatonin, you could talk about sun L-thionine um, or sun thionine. I was trying to remember, like they were saying the sun is better than just regular L-thionine. Let me make sure I'm, yeah, so it is sun L-thionine. Um, so you can talk to your vet about that um, as well, if you would like to go more on the Eastern realm and see you know, if your vet has any experience with dealing with those types of remedies or not. And of course, there's all kinds of Western remedies that you can use. Make sure if you're using a Western remedy and you're doing training that you understand when to give it to your dog, how long it's going to last um, in the system. Like some of these medicines will just last for a few hours. Some of them, they need to build up in the system over a period of, you know, a few weeks or um, a month to six weeks. Some of them are going to um, take a few hours to kick in. And then you wanna think, okay, I'm not gonna do training right after I give it to them. I'm gonna wait an hour or two after I give, I give the medication. So then it comes into question, that, like, are you wanting medication that's just gonna help in those moments? Or is it gonna be something that you're gonna be using on a day-to-day -day basis? And that's something that you can talk to your vet about. But the biggest thing is, is if you're doing training, you want to make sure the medication is going to still allow your dog to learn. You don't want to like shut off the brain from, from being able to um, learn new things. I didn't think if there's any, you know, thing else that I wanted to add. Yeah, I definitely would say like intention statements. And the last call I did last week was really about yourself and how to you know, get that energy moving through you and out so that you're not unconsciously projecting it on your dog. And even while you're doing these remedies that I talked about today, it is a good idea to add in like an intention statement or a commitment statement of I intend to be calm with my dog or I intend to be more present with my dog while I'm doing my training. 
or I intend to enjoy these um, moments with my dog when I have people over at my house. I intend to allow my dog to have the space to relax when people come over. There's so many ways that you can reward re word it and you got to choose you can how you want to word it, what words you want in there. And if you want to use I intend or I commit, I commit to training as a team, um, things like that. And notice they're all positive. I'm not saying I commit to helping my dog be less stressed, right? Now, when you think of that, you're seeing stress. So you want to say, I intend to help my dog be more relaxed, right? Those things are then going to help you see your dog be more relaxed. And the more you're picturing what you want, the more you're going to find things that are going to help you create that in your life. So it's really important that you're kind of aware of how your thoughts are going to affect your actions, your emotions, and your reality around you. So if you haven't seen last week's call, definitely um, pop on there. Okay. And... I would love to ask you guys, what tools will you use to help ground your dog? So in this call today, what were some of the remedies that you found that you're going to use to help your dog ground more? Go ahead and comment and let me know because I would love to hear the ones that you're going to choose to use. And I also would love for you to let me know what topics you would like to see in a Facebook Live because... Um, I really want to do topics that are going to, you know, inspire the public. So if you let me know what they are, then I can do topics around that. Excuse me. <laughs> and again, like between now and the end of April, I am going to be doing things more on the human energetic end and even maybe the dog energetic end as well. Oh, again, watch the replay. If you've watched this already, watch it again. You can laugh at me that <laughs> I did the whole copyright situation. I completely spaced it out. Um, and it is what it is. Thank you, Facebook, for calling me out on it. And thank you for letting me continue with, with the call anyway. So um, rewatch it, share it, comment below, spread this information because it is going to you know, help out, help out other people, right? And that's what we're really about. We're about being a collective of being a team, understanding, compassionate, helping each other and giving to others. And if you would love to learn more about the energy behind dog training, you can join me in person at a workshop that's going to be live at Chagrin Yoga on Saturday, April 29th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. And you can sign up at this link right here. I think it's like $20. It's either it's 20 to 25 if you set up, sign up ahead of time at the door. I think it's 30 to 35. Um, that this link is pinned in the comments below at the top. So you can just go to that link, click on it, and sign up. I would absolutely love to, to meet you in person and help you out. Now, you might be a good fit to work privately with four-legged scholars, and generally, the types of people that really enjoy working with me are the ones that really want to feel empowered because they want to get their dogs to listen to them. They don't want someone to take their dog and do the training for them and then bring the dog back home. They want to know how to do it. And are you somebody that... Um, wants to do positive training. And if you are, or you're interested in learning about positive training methods, I could be your girl. And do you want your training to be personalized just for you to help you and your dog? If that's the case, I'm your gal as well. Okay. So if that stuff is jiving with you, you will get 50% off a private session with me for attending this call today or watching the replay. All you got to do is mention this workshop to redeem it. And then um, you can tell me that after you set up a free phone chat. So um, you can find out about um, if I'm a good match for you, whatever, chat with me by setting up a free phone chat. And that link is in the comments below um, where you can click on that and, and create that. And then during that call, you can let me know that you um, saw this call to get the 50% off. I do want to let you know that I can help you no matter where you live. So 
if you have the internet, I can help you anywhere, live through Zoom, personally, privately, one-on-one, -on -one, and live with you. If you live in Northeastern Ohio, we can help you in person or through Zoom. There are benefits that I can do live online that I cannot do in person. There are benefits that I can do in person that I can't do online. I'm gonna tell you right now, if your dog has anxiety with people, a lot of people want to do the online because once they start realizing, oh, Joanna's going to come to the house and the dog's going to be really stressed out, that's not helpful. We need to train your dog when they're not super, super stressed, right? Um, so we want to get them to decompress and then add in the stressor. Um, and we do that through, you know, incorporating some of these methods today. And the more Facebook lives you see, the more that's going to make sense. And if that's confusing to you, so what? If you like me, set up the free phone chat and I can help explain it more for you. So to book a free phone chat with me, you can go to this link right here. It's pinned in the comments below. And if you would like to learn about any additional services that I offer um, that could be supportive to you, you can go to this link too. And it's also pinned in the comments below. All of that is up at the top. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, joining me today. Thank you for your compassion and understanding with um, the, so, the mistake that I made. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope that I see you guys in the future because I do this human and a dog training weekly every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. So mark your calendar so you can come back and learn some more. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Bye-bye. Not letting me leave. Here we go. Probably have to leave from this end. Okay, now I'm going. Bye, guys.